Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Unity of Command 2, Desert Rats, the newest DLC for Unity of Command 2. It comes out on July 14th. This is a turn-based war game and strategy game, which allows you to fight through the campaigns in North Africa and East Africa, as well as some battles in Greece in 1940 and 41. Uh, basically, it's looking at sort of Monty plus the other uh, adjacent theaters, uh, which the game hasn't covered yet. So um, it is a new DLC. It is a very different battles. And what I mean by that is some of the battles are designed very differently. There's some defensive battles, which I haven't seen a lot of in Unity of Command before. And then also there are just huge maps with small unit formations. And I think that's a really nice change of pace. It allows this DLC to really lean into what makes Unity of Command 2 special, and that is logistics and how important it is to the game and the mechanics. So I think it's a really interesting DLC. It's $9.99, and you do have to have the base game, as with any other DLC, to play. Uh, but uh, this is episode number three in our Let's Play series, playing through this campaign. Uh, this was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel from a couple of days ago, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy and we are going to be taking a look at, I believe, the fourth and fifth missions in this campaign. Now, the game has 20 new scenarios, but I believe they are broken up a little bit by a dividing campaign tree. So far in the game, we have fought one battle in uh, Greece. We fought Compass 1 and Compass 2 in Egypt and Libya. And now we are going to East Africa into Italian Somaliland and Ethiopia to take the Italian Empire back from them. I don't know a lot about these campaigns. I think it's interesting to think about because I think the first time I realized, and like conceptually I knew because I played on a bunch of European games uh, that looked at like European history in the late 1800s and early 1900s and seen documentaries and stuff. So like I knew Italy took Ethiopia. I knew that they had taken Italian Somaliland um, as a colony as well. So like I knew these things. But what I think I never thought of or knew much about was the actual campaigns in these colonies uh, by the Commonwealth forces to take them back. And I think the first time I had ever, like, the first time it really hit home that, oh, wait a minute, they actually fought campaigns here that you literally never read about was that when I was playing the third combat mission game, which was a desert, like North African uh, combat mission. I forget what the title of it was, but there was a combat mission game, combat mission three, and it was basically the North African campaign. And they had some scenarios in the, uh, in the Ethiopian campaign by the Commonwealth. They were all pretty easy to win as, as the Commonwealth. Um, so I guess we'll see how this uh, plays out. Now, we are going to start off here today with the road to Karen. Uh, by December 1940, the Italian units that had advanced into the Sudan in the summer now sat exposed in their positions near Kassala. Defeats suffered by the Italian forces in North Africa, I didn't realize they invaded Sudan either, uh, and Greece meant that there was no help in sight for these troops. To avoid disaster, the Duke of Aosta decided on a general withdrawal back to the more defensible terrain in Abyssinia and Eritrea. This withdrawal would, would prove wise as veteran Commonwealth reinforcements began arriving from North Africa in January 1941. Okay. So we are going to be fighting with the Sudan headquarters, which we really haven't upgraded much. We did give them artillery pieces, but that's about it. It's a 10-turn scenario. It is in January of 1941. The other one, Canvas, is also January, but it's about a week later. And it looks like we do have one bonus objective here to take Kub Kub, uh, which will improve our starting position in future battles. So let's jump in. The Italians have given their meager gain or have given up their meager gains in the Sudan and pulled back into Eritrea. Your forces near Kassala are ordered to strike across the border and pursue the enemy. Simultaneously, Briggs forces operating out of Port Sudan will make its way down the coast from the north. If all goes to plan, both forces will converge on Italian positions near Karen. 
We have air superiority and material dominance, but don't underestimate just how awful the infrastructure and terrain are in this part of the world. Yeah, so this should be interesting. Again, like from a logistical perspective, I would think this would be a tough, a tough fight. You can see here we only have one objective, uh, one primary objective, um, and that is Ecordat. Um, we're taking the Italian colonies in Eritrea and uh, and Abyssinia or Ethiopia. Um, pistol, pistol. So we are attacking from Kassala, which I believe is in Sudan, and then we're also attacking from Tokar, which might be in British Somaliland. Although I don't, did the did the British have any colonies in Somaliland before this? I'm not sure. Anyway, so we are going to be fighting it. We're trying to take Akordat by turn three for a sort of gold on time objective or victory. We also want to take Kub Kub by turn six, take and hold this pass here. Uh, Karora by turn three. Uh, Biskia uh, by turn five. Uh, Bentu by turn six and Raid Cairn by turn seven. Okay. We have one air reconnaissance unit. I have some cards as well, uh, which we can use also. And uh, here's our forces. Now this is a headquarters unit. I'm curious to see how many of these have more battles. I didn't realize this until last time. These units have a number up here, which represents how many scenarios they remain in the game. So the 11th Indian Brigade, for example, which has Gurkha rifles, it is a veteran unit with 255. They've got three steps and two specialist steps. These guys have more than three battles left, which tells me if I'm going to spend this prestige to make these units better, I probably want to spend it on the guys who are going to be around for a while. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and add two infantry steps, Indian infantry steps for 30 prestige to get them up to the max size of five steps with two specialists. These should be some very good troops. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any other upgrades. Now we do probably want to make sure so that some of the other forces are slightly upgraded, like the Briggs force over here. I don't think they actually fight again, but they've only got one step. Oh, I can't even upgrade them. They're out of range of a headquarters. Well, what the fuck? They've got one step. They do have some nice recon here. Meanwhile, the 7th Indian Brigade over here also is a plus three, so that's something we probably want to keep in mind. We do have a mechanized formation here, which I'm going to upgrade also because I want my mechanized troops to be good. So we'll give them... They have three steps of the recon. 240. Let's give them... Either engineers or more... Engineers are expensive. We'll do one more mechanized step. And I think that's all I'm going to do for now. I've got one unit with artillery. So I guess we'll just see how this plays out. I'm not sure. I don't want to spend too many points. We also do have the 5th Indian Brigade coming on turn two. We'll keep the 80 prestige here. And end the deployment phase. So we only have one headquarters here. It's the Sudan HQ. Let's also advance these troops south, the Briggs Force. We have two trucks, by the way. So I'm also going to immediately use a Blenheim Bomber card. Let's go ahead and hit these troops curl. And it did nothing. All right. So these troops can't actually... get any further. These guys can't support the attack. So I'm not going to launch an attack with Briggs Force, take casualties, and then not be able to do anything with the follow-up units. So we're going to hold off on attacking any further. We will hold these guys in position. We will expand their trucks to a level 2 depot to keep everybody in supply up here. Uh, and we've begun the encirclement of Karoa up here. Uh, we don't have enough movement points to fully encircle them or cut their road line here, but we do at least have all three units adjacent to that objective. Meanwhile, we have these recon forces down here. So we're going to go ahead and advance our mechanized force east toward Biskia. Oh, actually, first, let's do this. Let's use our recon aircraft here to see what's... All right, so there is an infantry at Biskia. I don't know that there's anything before that. 
Oh, there is. So there'll be some infantry here. All right, so we've got a zero to two and a zero to three. So the mechanized force, I think, is going to move. Let's do this. Let's move these guys down this roadway here. And let's also use some points on our HQ to repair this bridge. Um, let's do a zero to two. I'm going to attack with the infantry because the mechanized troops can keep going. A zero to four and overrun. And the supply situation, we don't have any depot down here, do we? We're just depending on those rail lines. So we'll go ahead and put a depot. I guess we'll put a depot up here with the, the infantry here. That should keep these all in supply here. Hey, coffee filter. How you doing? All right, so we've got... Everybody should be in supply now. And we are pushing toward Basquia. Again, we have to take... These objectives by five and six. We already destroyed one of the Italian defensive formations, which is great. Let's also just move this headquarters forward a little bit. Oh, I forgot about these guys back here. I wonder if it's worth trying to flank these guys down this roadway. They're probably going to be out of supply down there. But I'm wondering if flanking here will actually be worthwhile. We'll see, I guess. That does it for the turn, though. We don't have a lot of units to play with, so... The Italians move their headquarters, and that's all we see they do. We also get the 5th Indian Brigade will arrive this turn. That's nice. More recon. Oh, we did cut their supply. Nice. Okay, so we've got a 0 to 2, 0 to 2, 1 to 1. Let's do the 0 to 2 from off the road. Overrun and breach. Take the objective. We get a free supply card. That's nice. It'll probably come in handy this fight, too. We also keep this bridge intact. The Italians didn't blow it. So we took our first secondary objective and took it on time. And let's do this. We've only got one other battle here. I've got one free card that I can't sell. So let's go ahead and drop this depot here. And we're going to pull this depot back because the other one keeps them in supply. All right. So we are advancing toward Kabubk. Or Kub, Kub, Kub. From the east. Hopefully they don't blow this bridge in front of us because we have no headquarters that can rebuild it. Nothing in range anyway. Recon over here. Um. So we could mo move toward... Or at Cordot, if we don't think they have any troops there. I suspect they probably do. Zero to two. Do we want to do that? I guess we will. Just suppressed my troops. Didn't, didn't kill them. I don't want to take a casualty there unnecessarily, so we'll take the objective. And now we're adjacent. We also got another truck, so thanks for more free trucks. That's like, seems to be what we get for these secondaries getting taken on time. Okay, we've got two cards coming in next turn. One bomber. Let's hit these guys. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to attack there like that. These guys should be out of supply next turn anyway. And we don't have to take this objective till turn six. And it's only two right now. So. 
Cordot, we have till six. It's only two. So we can take some time to get troops into position here. Okay, let's move the headquarter forward to Basquia. These guys will advance back into contact next turn. So we'll end the turn. All right, they're going to move their headquarters, but no sign of any units moving. All right. Let's drop a size 2 depot here. We'll pull this rear depot back. So everybody should be in supply. We can also just use some command points and get them in supply. Advance to the rear of these troops at Berentu. Hold off on attacking there just for the moment. Take that bridge. Big deal that we took that bridge here south of Kor Koroa. So they didn't destroy it in our path. Probably push this. Well, actually, all these troops are out of the depot's range, so we might as well pull the depot back and then redeploy it next turn. These guys are going to be out of supply for two turns, but they should be back in supply after after that. Hey, Das, Roko. Hope you're well. All right. Welcome to the chat. Meanwhile, since there's nothing else to do right now, let's bomb the troops at Baron 2. Three suppression. Nice. Zero to three and the breach. Advance these troops in to take the objective and then finish the enemy unit off. They also get the overrun. So they'll advance up toward at Cordot. And then I'm gonna see if I can move my Can I read Karen? But I can cut the supplies to at Cordot. Karen, we have till turn seven. Or not, it's turn six. So they should be out of supply. Okay. So everybody on the southern part of the map, minus the mechanized guys, should be back in supply. And then we've got two trucks we can deploy potentially in the north to get the those troops back in supply. We're gonna move their headquarter and remove the depot at a cordon. We're going to deploy I guess both trucks here. Let's bomb the troops at a cordon. Result. Zero to one, I'll take that. We did lose a step, but it wasn't one of the specialists, so I'm okay with that result actually. And then we pursued and attacked and destroyed them. Hell yeah. Give these guys a logistical break. All right. All these guys should be in supply next turn. I'm not sure what to do with these guys. like to cut the rail line, but I don't have the movement points to do that, I don't think. Did I just cut... I did just cut their supply here. Zones of control somehow favored me enough to get me there.
All right, so Karen's cut off from supplies. We've got enough turns probably to starve them out. I think that will also cut the supply to Koob Koob. I guess we'll see. Okay. All right. We still have quite a few cards too. But might as well save them if we don't need them. Italians didn't do anything. These guys are out of supply. All right. So we're going to get as many units adjacent to Karen as possible. We're going to let them starve out for another turn or so. Koob Koob has to fall by six for the secondary, so we've got a little bit less time there. These unit, this unit fights another three times. Three suppression, wow. We took some casualties there, but we broke their back. Nice. Overrun and breach. So we destroyed the unit. They still have the HQ, but we'll take it next turn. Very good. We did lose, a, I think, a specialist there, but I think it's worth it. Okay. They have till is next turn the last one for Karen. Ooh, nice. That was a very good air attack. To that extent, let's do a set piece. We breached him and drove him back. Very good result. Pursue and destroy, I guess. We did take some casualties there. Okay. There you go. Victory! Let's continue for one more scenario. All right, give me the zero to two corner. There we go. Get that mechanized force back in supply, hopefully. I mean, it's adjacent to the goddamn headquarters, so let's hope they do. They, they got back into supply. Okay, end scenario. There you go. Primary objectives taken on time. All of the secondaries taken on time. Seven enemy KIA, seven prisoners. We took one UK casualty, one free French casualty. Two units total, both of the casualties lost were specialists, so that does kind of suck that all the casualties we took were specialist rather than regular steps, but still a very good result for our troops gaining experience and not bleeding too badly, especially for the two units that have three plus battles left to fight. Okay, so Road to Karen is a success. Last battle in this conference is Canvas. It's a longer one, 15 scenarios. And you can see here, 
British forces in East Africa were wholly unprepared when Italy declared war in the summer of 1940. Taking advantage of this, the Italians advanced into Kenya, meeting little opposition. However, poor logistics limited the scope of these advances. Months later, South African and British colonial forces conducted a successful all-arms raid on the Italian border post at El Wak. This demonstration unnerved the Duke of Osta to such a degree that he opted to abandon his gains and fall back to Italian Somaliland and Abyssinia. General Cunningham's East Africa force would soon follow. So we've got the East African headquarters. No secondary objectives that carry over here. And uh, we'll see what's uh, in store for us. After months of small raids and skirmishes, we have finally assembled enough troops to attack Italian Somaliland and southern Abyssinia. Your main force is concentrated in the east and should advance into Jubaland, uh, take the port of Kismayo, uh, and then cross the Juba River. Once across, see if your mobile troops can make a dash for Mogadishu. Indications are it is not defended. In the west, your forces are more scattered. The front line here may be very fluid, but reports suggest that Italian forces are weak and lack mobility. Be warned that the hostile Merrill tribes west of Lake Turkana may impede your advance on Kalam. Okay, that hostile tribes is not something you have to worry about in any other unity of command game. All right, so we have quite a few objectives to take here. Uh, Galib is one of the primaries by turn eight. Uh, Moyala by turn 10. This is a pretty big map, too. Good thing we got all those free trucks, right? We have scattered troops, as the game indicated here, kind of all over. Um, we also have a bunch of secondaries at Kismayo, Mega, Mogadishu, Frontier Wells, Afamadu, and Kalim. We have to take Kismayo by turn 6. Mega by eight. Man, yeah, it would be nice if it was like, all right, can I zoom out? I can't. So let's see here. Kismayo is an objective. Afamadu is an objective. Galib is an objective. So Kismayo by six. Afamayo by Madu by five. And then did I say Kalim? Oh. Okay, so these objectives by 5 and 6, respectively, and then this one by 8. They're all at least in the same general direction. Where I've got troops kind of heading that way. I don't really have any mechanized forces that I can see. They're all just humping it out on foot. Maybe they've got some trucks. And Mogadishu's all the way out here. Next to the coastal road, which is nice, so... One downside is the coastal road may be defended. One positive is that it's probably going to be easier to supply. So I think it looks like what we would do here is we would have the 1st South African Brigade advance east along this road toward Afmadu from the flank. The East African Brigade and Gold Coast Brigade would advance up the road directly. And then after we take Afmadu, we'd probably break some troops off to go after Kismayo. And then additional troops would go north toward Barderia, because I think we might be able to flank Mogadishu. So that's that. Those objectives are pretty straightforward. Meanwhile, over here on the left flank, we've got the 5th South African Brigade here. That probably needs to advance on Moila by turn 10. Mega by eight, Frontier Wells by three. So I would say the second South African and fifth South African will converge on the Frontier Wells before shifting east. And then the 25th EAB and the, the second, third, 25th EAB and the second, fourth, 25th EAB will advance to the left, to the west of this lake on Kalim. Or maybe better concentrate. Well, there's a truck supply option here, which makes that compelling. But we could just move everybody east of the wells here, take the wells, move a couple of units. But this is a major r river, so if they blow this bridge, we can't approach from the east without a pontoon bridge, which I don't think my HQ can do. So I actually think we should advance these guys up this way. I can't upgrade these guys, they're all out of range of our headquarters unit. 
which is over here. We do have some prestige. We can use to upgrade some of these. I feel compelled to do the 5th South African Brigade because they're going to be around for three more battles. Or more. So we're going to do... I, I will give them engineers, which are expensive, admittedly. And then a South African step. Is that really all I can upgrade? Nobody else is in range of the freaking headquarters. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens here. Do we have recon? We do have some battleships too. Nice. See what's out ahead of us over here. So multiple infantry units at Afamadu. Thanks for the follow under or under the mistletoe. Also, summer and random guy. Or some random guy. Alright, they're still, still gonna be in supply. Okay. I miss the Blitzkrieg. We also do have an airdrop, which is nice. Put that depot up toward the front there. Swing east on those objectives. These are going to be out of supply, aren't they? Interesting, they can't supply further east, huh? Well, I guess we'll hold off on that last one then. This is our last... battle before the next conference. We'll just do that. Should keep everybody in supply for now. I don't even know who to bomb. I've got some recon. I don't have any actual enemy troops in sight. Can I bomb them if I can't see them? Nope. All right. I can end the turn. Where are these guys coming on the map? Can't even see yet. Yep, air attacks left, but I can't do anything. If you comment in chat, will THG read it? Yes, Charcoal, I will. You're welcome. I see that you are here and you are commenting in chat. Okay, so there's one bad guy there. Let's drop bombs on these guys. Who are they anyway? Italian colonial. Got him! Alright, well we destroyed him. That'll give us the frontier wells by turn three. Or it should. We'll advance on Kaleem. Is 
that river is separating us from the other troops. All right, I'll take a zero to two. My engineers are fatigued, but not destroyed. And I'll take the objective. East Africa, Mon Mon Harrington's added. Okay, I think that's like a free elite unit. You like to view the stream and comment and then chat. In fact, those are my two favorite things to do on Twitch.tv. Well, I'm glad that we could uh, we could oblige. All right, so we took our first secondary. We're not supposed to take that till turn five, so that's nice. I want to bomb the guys at Kismayu, so I am going to use one of my cards that I got for free for extra air power, and it was worthless. All right, attack there. They didn't even shoot back. Oh yeah. That went way better than predicted. All right. So let's pull this supply and deploy two new... Oh, that's lame. All right, so we can pull this truck, right? Oh, well, that'll actually leave our HQ out of supply, so we don't want to do that. Although I, can, I can't move the HQ again this turn. Okay. In any event, we've got three units here. We're going to move some of them south. Is Kismayo open? No, there's actually a concentration of troops there. But we do have a battleship bombardment, so that's nice. Meanwhile, this is a major river, so if they blow these bridges, we're fucked. I don't even think my HQ has the ability to build... It might have the ability to build pontoons. Salt crossing is there, river crossing is there. I don't see pontoon building. Huh. All right, we'll give them to those lead troops. They're the only ones in reach anyway. Okay, end turn. Oh, wait, we have a new unit. Where are they getting deployed? All the way down here. That's it? They're so fucking far away. Oh, it's a mechanized unit. Nice. Okay. Well, you get up there then. You're going to be out of supply, but that's fine. Get up toward Kiss Mayu. Kiss Mayu. Maybe they'll think because they have two units, they don't need to blow bridges. Please don't blow bridges, Italian headquarters. It's like we've got to overrun them fast enough. Got him. Oh, we lost our recon. Um. Fuck, they might blow the bridges now. Fuck. Because I can't advance. Really need them to not blow that bridge this turn. Can we repair major bridges? I can't remember if we can. I think we probably can. We'll pull these this depot back. There's no reason to leave that one in the rear. By the way, thanks for the tip there, War. If I ask them, they're not legally allowed to blow the bridge up. If only that's how it worked. Yikes. All right. 
Frontier Wells. We took them. We got them. Gives me another truck, eh? And since those guys are out of supply, doesn't need to do anything with that. We'll get the one of the free trucks and then we'll deploy it up here because we can because of the frontier wells. It's a new supply source for us. So that'll be nice. These guys are already pretty beat up. So we'll bomb them. They should still be at least partially suppressed next turn. Near Mega. Guess my will probably fall next turn. It'll just a question of bridges. It's a question of bridges. I can't do the accent, so I probably shouldn't try. You're out of supply for two turns. You're the only disrupted unit this turn, so I'm going to drop. Give you an airdrop. So I can attack this base from any of these directions. To that end, I'm going to go ahead and clear out my uh, the threat to my rear. Deploy that depot with two, pull these tr back. Attack these guys, zero to two breached. What's, can I not get up there? All right, I can't. We gotta take Mega by eight. We're still pretty we're pretty ahead there. Gillib by eight also. So they didn't destroy these bridges, which is good for us. Use these points on logistics. Go ahead and bomb the troops and kiss my oh shit, we turned it into ruins. Well, give me the battleships then. All right, well, I'm going to go with the one to one, I guess. Not that I want to take those casualties. So we took one of the bridges and we also took the town. So that means we should have a leg up of trying to overrun the enemy down here. Do we get more uses of the bombardment? I'm not sure. Um, the only the bad thing is this is a very narrow front to be advancing across. I wonder if we get assault boats because that would be nice. Trying to advance up through Margarita is going to be a real pain in the ass.
Okay. These guys already moved. These guys already moved, so that'll end the turn. Left flank, move first. All right. There you go. So we will attack Kaleem next turn. Because we can. They'll be in supply, or they should be. Zero to two with the overrun lets me attack again. Zero to two here is good. Oh, we did take a casualty. That was... That was an incorrect assessment. It said we would lose no one. Fortunately, these aren't troops who fight again. So we took that objective now. We've taken almost all the secondary objectives well ahead of the dates we were supposed to take them by. Actually, they weren't even killed. It looks like it was just they were suppressed. Uh, don't do that. Alright, so we'll advance on Moila next turn. Or Moy... Whale? Okay. Interesting. So actually we can get multiple... Attacks here on Margarita. I'm going to concentrate supplies here on this source. Three depots in here. We'll pull this depot back. We'll move the East African headquarters forward. Get everybody back in contact. Gleb we have till 8. It is currently 5. They do have engineers here, which is going to make it tough. But I'm going to hold off on attacking Margarita right now, I think. Can't even bombard anyone now. Mogadishu we have till 10. That's going to be a... We're going to need to use our mechanized forces to get up there on time. Okay, so they're falling back. Adding some steps to the troops in the south. The only problem is that eats up movement points. It's turn six, I have to eight. I think there's only one more enemy in front of us here. None of these guys fight again. So I will just take the losses here. And we took the base. Nice. There's also apparently some Italian colonials on the other side of the major river, so I can't do anything with these troops now. Because there's no headquarter to uh, launch from. The idea of a saturation airstrike in <laughs> East Africa is pretty funny in 1940. All right, so it leaves me with two bombers to hit Margarita. What does the reconnaissance been forced to? All right, I can do an assault crossing. 
five. They just all die. Okay. Don't want to do that. We could also cross to Gleb. Or Geleb. There's no one on that depot. I mean, we don't really need to take these guys. We could just isolate them, but let's bomb them and see what happens. All right. I'll take a zero to two attack. Some troops are suppressed, but not in any kind of meaningful way. Nice, we got the overrun. All right. These guys are all still going to be in supply too from this big depot on these good roads. Turn eight for that. I mean, they're not going to abandon the base. So I'm just going to river cross here. Give me adjacent. I could have gone to the other side of Gallup, which would have, I believe, probably cut them off from supply. That might have been the smarter thing to do, but I wanted to keep my my own troops in supply, which I don't think they would have been if I did that. Move the uh, headquarters forward here. And then we'll make the move on Gallup next turn. Meanwhile, this mechanized force is going to race east toward Mogadishu. See if they can get there by turn 10. Troops moving on Moila. Yeah. Do I plan on removing the two supply depots to the left of the three? I probably should. I might have missed that. Oh, nice. They moved off that bridge, so now I can cross. there to keep them in supply these guys have been out of supply for two turns okay oh wow these guys have been out for two also nice Okay, good. So they may be starving by the time we actually fight them. Racing up the road. All right, where's the th where's the other depot I need to pull? Back here. Are they not in range? Like, why are they not... Do they not have the... Ability to faint? Shit. They turned it into ruins. To that end, I think we will try to flank. So this is going to be a challenge now, actually, because they're in entrenched. They're in a fort. I don't have set piece. I do have set piece attack, but no one can do it. Because the artillery, I don't know. We'll have to see what we can do next turn. But it's not great that I uh, turn that city into ruins. It wasn't my intention, but. We'll still take Gileb. I can starve him out well before turn 15. Just a question of whether we can keep sort of our per perfect track record going from a supply per or from a. Um, on time perspective. These guys are two no supply there for them. Knocked out that headquarters. Give me more supply in this depot so we make sure those Ford units get back in the supply. Just Gelab left, and then Mogadishu. 
But Mogadishu fell this turn. Set piece of, well, actually, first things first, let's bomb them. Set piece attack. Breaches their fort down to entrenchments. We'll go with the engineers. These guys fight three more times, though. I don't love the idea of taking casualties. These guys fight maybe not at all, so we'll do the one to one. Well, that ended up being two to one. Zero to two breached. We took it. We got him. We still lost the engineers, though. Still got their asses killed. Lame. I maybe shouldn't have done that. They might be able to retake that next turn. I guess we'll see. Well, that's it. We took all the objectives. Nope, they can't. Okay. Continue. Might as well gain some experience here. to do. I think that was it. Ruins basically give the defenders more def better defensive abilities. Think of like how they always talked about how Stalingrad was bombed into dust and then the Germans had trouble because of that. Same, same concept. You turn it into a, a wasteland that you now have to attack into. Same thing happened at um the uh, Mana Casino. All right, so victory. I'm going to end the scenario there. Con 44, yeah, to, to a degree as well. So 238 score plus 20% supply. Primaries taken on time. 15 enemy K, 14 prisoners. We took four British casualties. One of those was a infantry step. Three were specialists. That does hurt a little bit. Uh, but you can see here we took every secondary on time. We took every primary on time. Good result there for us. Leaning into the next conference, that gives me 395 prestige. All right, and that's going to do it for today's episode of Unity of Command 2, Desert Rats. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel from a couple of days ago, but we've almost hit the one hour mark, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We won a couple of battles, and we'll see what we have in store for us in our next video. Until then, however, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out.